right, we are back to the action. Uh, welcome back to We Are Libertarians, episode number 307. I'm Chris Spangle, and this is Harry Price. Harry, how are you? Going good, going good. If you haven't subscribed to our show, please do so now. Please be sure to uh, leave a rating and review while you're there. This segment is brought to you by the We Are Libertarians store at wearelibertarians.com. Um, you know, I want to add in a segment called The Path to Libertarianism. As, as you may have heard earlier in the show, uh, we have something called The Path to Libertarianism at wearelibertarians.com that teaches you the basics of, of, of libertarianism. And I think it's easy to lose sight of the basics of libertarianism and foundational principles and, and also applying those directly to uh, news stories of the day. And so I want to make a point every episode towards the end in the third segment of, of talking about uh, the philosophy that we believe in and grounding ourselves in it and remembering that libertarianism is constant. It is a constant in our life, and we are the ones that measure ourselves against that constant truth, and we are the ones that change, not the philosophy. I see so many people trying to adjust libertarianism to whatever they believe, mm -hmm. and that's just not how it works. So, you know, I was, I was reading the news, and Gina Haspel, who is our CIA director currently, was running a secret black site in Thailand, and she was involved in torture. And it got me to thinking about the libertarian approach to torture. Now, I'm not talking about libertarian torture. Uh, which is basically liberty and chill, right? That's how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> I re people sit there and I yell at them voluntarily. No, uh, <laughs> reading the comments on our Facebook page. Yes, uh, yes. On on the big page, yep. uh, go look at our Facebook page. That is libertarian torture. Um, but no, she is our CIA director. She is in charge of. Uh, for the, she's not your CIA director. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, because of a, of a FOIA request, a Freedom of Information Act request, her cables were declassified eh, three months too late, outlining new details of torture perpetrated by the CIA and uh, Americans during the War on Terror. And Gina Haspel was in charge of a black site in Thailand. Harry, what is a black site? Black site? Other than your house. How dare you? Um, no, my site is not a black site or the uh, website that you have as your homepage on your browser. Um, a black site is basically one of those ABC agencies where things go in, things don't go out. No one, no, no one's supposed to know of the site. No one knows where it goes. Right. Yeah. It's it's black as in dark as in there's nothing. You know, nothing. Nothing's happening here. So the these cables were released, and here what here's what was in the cables, according to the Independent, in a story titled "Torture of Terror Suspect at CIA Black Site," operated by current director Gina Haspel, detailed in newly declassified cables. They write the cables dating from 2002 detail actions taken against subsect, uh, suspect Abd Al Rahim Al -Naz -Naz Zahiri. Uh, who in one interrogation, according to the documents, had his clothes ripped from him as he whimpered that he would do anything his interrogators required. He was told if he did not cooperate, he would suffer in ways he never thought possible. Interrogation escalated, she writes, uh, rapidly from the subject being aggressively debriefed by interrogators while stand standing at the walling wall to multiple applications of the walling technique and ultimately multiple applications of the watering technique, reads one document referring to the use of waterboarding. Another document, uh, and, and just so you, uh, in case you're not familiar, walling, uh, I put in here somewhere, because um, I didn't know what that was. Which is the one they put them on the wall? Walling is a method of torture used by the CIA in which a person's neck is encircled by a collar and the collar then used to slam the person against the wall. According to information gathered by the Red Cross from six detainees, walling meant beating by use of a collar in at least one instance against a concrete wall. Um, so uh, Al Nazahiri crawled into the small box which he in yeah. which he was confined after the torture session was completed. The questioners told the prisoner they did not believe he was telling the truth and threatened more action if he did not cooperate, though it appears they eventually concluded he was not withholding information. Um, if you read the cable, they talk about the, when they did that, they walled him, they pushed him to the ground, they shaved all the hair off his head, mm -hmm. 
They stripped him of his clothes. Then they put him in that box. Right. So they didn't just like put him in a box. This is the first time that we've seen any detailed information of what we saw in the Abu Ghraib pictures. Yeah. Uh, so it, it has been confirmed that she was in charge of the site and that she suspected of writing the cables. Um, the archive with one outstanding question was whether Miss Haspel wrote cable one cable from uh, December 1st, 2002, which used remarkably vi- vivid language to describe the torture sessions. Uh, the interrogator strode cat-like into the well-lit confines of the cell, deftly removed the subject's black hood with a swipe, paused, and in a deep measured voice said that the subject, having calmed down after his staged run-in with his hulking, heavily muscled guards the previous day, should re- reveal what subject had done to vex his guards to the point of rage. Uh, Mr. Al Nazahiri, a Saudi citizen, is believed by U.S. intelligence officials to be behind the 2000 bombing attack on the coal that killed 17 U.S. sailors and injured dozens more. He has denied this. He was seized in 2002 and held for four years on various secret CIA prisons in Afghanistan, Thailand, Poland, Morocco, and um, Romania. He was transferred to the U.S. Uh, he was transferred to Guantanamo, where he was eventually brought before the Guantanamo Military Commission and charged with plotting the attack on the coal. He faces the death penalty if convicted. It's 2006 when he was charged and still waiting on his conviction. That's a long time ago, Harry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so just so you know, waterboarding is a war crime, both under U.S. and international law, dating back to the U.S. prosecution of Japanese soldiers for torturing U.S. POWs during World War II. So we pushed to have Japanese soldiers prosecuted for war crimes when they tortured us using waterboarding. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, Dick Cheney says it's not waterboarding anymore, and we just deny that it is, and yeah. we put this person in charge of the CIA. Right. Yeah. And then you've got jackalheads here in the United States from the all the time. Like, it's not waterboarding, not that bad. It's not that rough. Christopher Hitchens got waterboarded, one of the, the greatest liberals to ever live. And he was in favor of the Iraq War uh, and, and those wars. He mm-hmm. became kind of a hawk. Uh, and he got waterboarded and basically said, if this isn't torture, then I don't know what is. Uh, so, I mean, he, he was given the full treatment by former security agents. Uh, so he he considered it torture, and he was somebody that was sympathetic to the Bush administration during that period. Mm-hmm. So I think some of the central questions you have to ask yourself, if you support torture, what is your line? Right. Like, where do you draw the line? Uh, and, and so if you're going to physically assault someone, or mm-hmm. sexually assault someone even, where does that stop? Um What's that line for you? At what age must a victim be before torture becomes acceptable? Uh, Are family members of targeted people also fair game? Will resulting information be useful or utterly uh, unreliable? Because as we'll see, the information gathered during torture is uh, not uh, not usable usually. So, and this... this, uh, this period, I mentioned Abu Ghraib, and for you young people, you may not remember this, but there was a period where some pictures got released of, like, you, you, it's hard to explain to, to people who were in elementary school when this happened, mm-hmm. the absolute fervor. Um, I, yeah. I, 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 I grew up in a town with um, a major headquarters of, uh, it was like 98% white and 2% Muslim. Mm -hmm. And I had uh, two best friends that were Muslim. Their dad was in charge of something called ISNA. And I saw people in the days after 9-11 go, uh, including one of my best friends who was their best friend, you know, claim, I bet they're, they're keeping weapons inside. I'm like, you've known these guys our entire life. Like, I saw people turn on these two guys because of their faith uh, like they knew these were decent people but it just the the amount of anti-muslim sentiment after mm-hmm. 9/11 was intense uh and it was 24/7 security by the plainfield police for a period of time mm-hmm. at that particular location um oh excuse me coffee maker 
Oh, that's the. I thought my headphones were getting too too close. No, no, it's coffee maker. It has an auto shut off feature. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, it scared me. Um, <laughs> and and the propaganda around the war. You think that the propaganda around Russia, or oh, that's true. Or, yeah. or you think the fervor of politics today? It doesn't hold a candle to two thousand and three and the Iraq war lead up, mm-hmm. and post nine eleven. Um. George Bush could have act, asked for whatever he wanted and would have gotten it in the days after 9-11. I mean, it was, yep. there were very few people. Julia Carson was uh, the congressperson here in Indianapolis, so one of the few people who stood up against the Afghanistan war and was, I mean, it was, bru- it was yeah. brutal. And she got poo-pooed down. Yeah. yeah. So it's, so when the Abu Ghraib photos came out, mm-hmm. it was... Oh, maybe all these anti-war people have had a point, or yeah. and oh, maybe we're going too far, and oh, wow, what's happening to us? Uh, here's why. So this comes from Counterpunch: A Brief History of American Torture. Um, the most notorious of these torture prisons was Abu Ghraib near Baghdad, Iraq, where prolonged vicious beatings, sexual humiliation, and death threats were common. And where men and at least one boy and allegedly numerous women were raped by their jailers, the jailers being American soldiers. As one former guard there quipped, you can't spell abuse without Abu. Abu Ghraib detainees were forced to sleep in flooded cells without mattresses, flooded with water, stripped naked and forced to crawl and bark like dogs, attacked with dogs, forced to curse Islam and eat pork and food from dirty toilets. Old men were dragged around by their hair, ridden like donkeys, and urinated on soldiers like Ch- Sergeant Charles Grainer, who was fond of sodomizing innocent detainees with found objects. The Christian in me says it's wrong, Grainer said, of torturing prisoners, but the, the corrections officer in me says I love making a grown man piss himself. And then there's the experimentation aspect of torture. Um, we pay two psychologists... Uh, $80 million to run these black sites. Mm. Like, they didn't have staffs. It was two guys. They got 40 mil each to oh, r- wow. to set up these programs. Uh, and as the, the nation writes, the CIA just didn't torture it, it experimented on human beings. The road from abstract hypotheticals to the authorized use of waterboarding and confinement boxes runs straight into the train of human experimentation. On April 15, 2002, Mitchell and Jessen arrived at the black site in Thailand to supervise the interrogation of Azu, Abu, Z- Abu Zubeda. Uh, now, it's been rumored that she was there and helped torture Zubeda, and that's not true. She was not. Uh, the first high-value detainee captured by the CIA. By July, Mitchell proposed more coercive techniques to CIA headquarters, and many of these were approved in late July. From then on, until the program was dry docked in 2008, at least 38 people were subjected to psychological and physical torments, and the results were methodically documented and analyzed. That is the textbook definition of human experimentation. Oof. So That's the black side, they can do what they want. Right. They don't exist. It's all those things they use for like, oh, it's, oh yeah. Because yeah, when the photos came out, it was always like these rumors of these black sites and what stuff was going on. And even now, like you see like some, some of these people that wasn't up there, you know, they just see them as photos of memes and stuff like that. But it's like, no, no, right. when those photos came out, that was, you know, it was tragic. bad. It was bad. So what are, what are the arguments against torture from a libertarian perspective? Uh, the first is the moral argument. And it was captured really well by Wendy McElroy from Fee in, a, in an article called Libertarianism and Torture. Uh, and she writes, Libertarianism declares that no moral or practical consideration outweighs the right of a peaceful individual to use his own body and property. When rights are breached, the accused is entitled to due process before remedies can justly be imposed, and those remedies must be proportional to the violation. Ultimately, however, I oppose torture not because I am a libertarian, but because I am a human being. Torture destroys everyone and everything decent it touches, Mm -hmm. including the torturer's humanity, i.e. the guy who's a Christian, but he loves to make a grown man piss himself. Right. Um, And so, if Abu Zubaydah or or, or Osama bin Laden or any of these people are captured, then they're to be put on trial. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, they're, they're, yeah. You're not. You're According not. To our rules, our laws, our right. constitution. Right. 
That's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. It's the idea of holding them into a black site and torturing them. It's just going to cause blowback. And what if they're innocent? Oh, that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the blowback's going to happen, you know, doing it regardless of whether they did it or not. But yeah, right. especially if they're innocent. Because you, you. Well, the thing is, like, with the. They have no ability to. Because they probably have no evidence against them, or they don't want to produce anything in there, or they don't want them speaking. Right. But the idea that they can even prove they're innocent or even just go against of being being held at this site because we don't know like a lot of these guys if you go through a lot of them a lot of them still retain their innocent after all this happened on duel mm-hmm. you know you know like some of the stuff that happened you're just like dude just kill me just kill me yeah i did that just kill me right i'm tired of this you know yeah at the end of the day every person is entitled to not be harassed and their person is not to be violated Mm-hmm. And if you have evidence, then you put them on trial. And if they are convicted after a after due process and after a trial of their peers, uh, then then you then you do with them what you will. And that doesn't include torture. That means you put them in prison. They lose their rights and their freedom by being put in a place where they don't have access to their full rights. True. Yeah. But their person still should not be violated. Correct. That is a fundamental tenet of Americanism. Mm-hmm. And and I would say, well, they're not Americans. I, I, go ahead. Doesn't matter. Or prove it in court. <laughs> <laughs> take them to court and prove it. Right. You won't even take them to court. Or your constitution doesn't state that you don't have to give them these rights. Right. There's no witnesses that stops. If you believe in the concept of natural rights, of yeah. individual rights, then you are, when you are born, you are just, in, you inherently have certain rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it goes to sort of the Lockean arguments uh, th- that led to the founding, the natural rights argument, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but if well, let's let's move on to the effectiveness argument, because the effectiveness argument, because even if you morality schmorality, yeah, these guys are bad guys. We've got to get them. We've got to do with them. What we what? It's like twenty four. We've got thirty seconds to detonate the bomb. We got to put a car battery to their balls. Yeah. Um. Michael Schmermer, uh, who is the head of uh, Skeptic Magazine, wrote an article in Scientific American. We've known 400 years that torture doesn't work. And uh, it, one paragraph really stood out to me in this article. In contrast, a 2014 study in the Journal of Applied Cognitive Psychology entitled The Who, What, When, Why, and hum- uh, The Who, What, and Why of Human Intelligence Gathering surveyed 152 interrogators and found that Rappaport and relationship building techniques were employed most often and perceived as the most effective of regardless of the context and the intended outcomes, particularly mm-hmm. in comparison to confrontational techniques. Mm-hmm. Another 2014 study in the same journal interviewing high-value detainees sampled 64 practitioners and detainees and found that detainees were more likely to disclose meaningful information and earlier in the interview when Rappaport building techniques were used. Imagine that, treating someone nicely... And making and flipping like a them human. like a human being with mm-hmm. dignity mm-hmm. causes them to eventually come to your side. That's a yep. basic persuasion. Yeah, it's like um, if you ever watch those like those true crime like true TV shows, and you mm-hmm. see that old detective, that police officer, and then when they get them, they sit there. They don't have anything. They have no case. They just know, but they have no evidence. Right. And they sit there and they spend the hours just talking to this guy. They eventually get him to one break down and just start confessing to everything. Right. You know, they they know this dude's a scumbag. This guy's a scumbag and just killed three people. Well, there's they're, they're there's talking a gr- to him. Yeah, maybe. there's a great series on Hulu or Amazon or Netflix or one of them called The Looming Tower, and it follows. Um, Ali Soufan, who was an FBI agent tracking the coal guys, and mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know it shows his techniques and how you know they don't really care about you and why would you have loyalty to blah 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 you know and and it works, <coughs> including you know and some light fear tactics, yeah. but it's persuasion. It's not f- shoving a, a a bottle up somebody's butt and can and thinking that that's going to make them give you all that does is make them hate you yeah like harry 
if you hated me, are you are you more or less likely to give me what I want? Exactly. Yeah, you're not going to give me what I want. I have no reasoning that this is going to stop. Even if I give you everything you want, dude, you've already like broke the barrier, the touch barrier. Like I could give you what you want, and you seem to be enjoying this. Right. <laughs> you know. So. You know, I don't know if it's going to stop, you know, yeah. just to give you what you want, you know, and even like some of that light torture stuff happens even here in the United States because some some districts just do it to get out of people. In, so in most cases, these are like young men who are very backwards emotionally mm -hmm. and the slightest amount of vulnerability and empathy makes them open up and pops them like a can of, you know, tinned yeah. biscuits. Well, that's the other thing. You hear a lot of Navy SEALs that talk about that when they capture these guys. Like, Well, these guys are cowards. All right, if they're cowards, then why do you need to do all this stuff and threaten them and do all this if they're such cowards? Right. They cower at the end of a threat to them, then, you know, then why do you need to do this? So there's a 459 page report by the Senate Intelligence, uh, Senate Select Committee on Intelligence uh, in 2014, and just the abstract was like 200 or was like 500 pages. <laughs> So the actual report, I don't think, has been released. Just the 459 pages of, of the initial findings. So there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, and they the documents related to torture of terrorism suspects concluded that the CIA's use of enhanced interrogation techniques, see torture, was not effective means of acquiring intelligence or gaining cooperation from detainees. It adds that multiple CIA detainees fabricated information resulting in faulty intelligence. So... Um, so, yeah, that's the other thing. Is like someone's going to give you whatever the heck you want, just to make it stop. Right. And the other thing is, like, you see how long they've got these people. Even if they did have names, dates, or stuff like that, or what they believe, or what some of that. As long as you've had them, all their intel is garbage. Right. You know, now you're just doing it for pleasure. You found this guy for four years. Yeah, all his intel is dirt. All his intel is dirt. So what? He could let's say he has all the passwords and all the sites, but the they're well, done now. They were trained in their manuals. The jihadists were trained to give like certain traces of truthful information, mm -hmm. but then not. I mean, it is very interesting. This book that um, Sufan wrote called "The Black Banners" about this period, and uh, well, this not this period, the lead up, and then uh, he he has a follow follow up book. Uh, the I can't I can't remember the title, but I'll put it in the show notes. Um, the natural rights argument uh, that all men are created equal, that all men are, are inherently uh, granted the, the right to life, liberty, and property based on Lockean principles. And concepts like rule of law are important. There was a, a CTC, a counterterrorism uh, something, CTC legal letter for the CIA on torture statutes that was allegedly wrote, mm -hmm. where basically before they started doing these techniques, they asked the Justice Department, like, hey, can you tell us what we'll do to break the law? Like, so they already had an awareness that they were going to do illegal things. Mm -hmm. And they were asking for individual CIA agents to be dismissed from legal proceedings to have this CYA letter yeah. drafted. Uh, and so that's that's not following the rule of law. If you're asking a phony baloney letter to be, you know, it's a literally, literally, literally a get out of jail free card is what they were asking for. Mm -hmm. It's not following the rule of law, which is the foundational principle of of the republic of any, unless it's pure anarcho capitalism. If you've got a little bit of force centralized in a government, you got to have rule of law where the rules are written down and everybody follows them equally and they're equally applied. Um, and opposing tyranny, obviously, any, we oppose any tyranny. And I think when you read that passage about Abu Ghraib, that's tyrannical behavior. Yes. So. Yep. Yes. And, and then as you got these guys, these zealots, and you've captured them, they are gonna if they are who they say they are, right? Who right. you think they are? They're gonna fall back in their training because everything they've ever heard about America is how tyrannical they are, how awful they are. Right. You were proving it right. Exactly. To them. Right. So they're just gonna fall right into the training, just like any of the Navy SEALs would. It drives just them like back. A, just like a, a Marine would. They would just fall right back into the training. Like, oh, these guys are scumbags, just like the guys told me they are. Grant asked what CYA. Yes, cover your ass. Letter. Um, you know. In 1689, Locke wrote in the Second Treaty of Government that people are born with certain inalienable rights. And you're born with inalienable rights. Mm -hmm. You're born regardless of your nationality. Nationality mm -hmm. does not play into it. Right. 
the right to not be fucked with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and we as Americans don't get to just decide that we get to violate someone else's natural right because we are Americans and they are Muslims. Correct. Because we were born on the landmass known as the United States. That's right. The magic line. It's 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 just not how it works. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't take them away. A government cannot erase these rights. Mm -hmm. And you know, among these, uh, you know, uh, so so the Constitutional Rights Foundation, which had a, a nice little ditty on some of this, Locke believed that the most basic human law of nature is the preservation of mankind. To serve that purpose, he reasoned, individuals have both a right and a duty to preserve their own lives. Murderers, however, forfeit their right to life since they act outside the law of reason. Locke also argued that individuals should be free to make choices about how to conduct their own lives as long as they do not interfere with the liberty of others. Locke, therefore, believed liberty should be far-reaching. Uh, and so going back to the murderers part, yes, they forfeit their rights. If the evidence is compiled and it goes through a trial and a jury finds mm -hmm. them to be guilty. Correct. And that is what is so fundamentally egregious about Gitmo mm -hmm. and that someone like the, uh, the the first guy that we talked about is still in Gitmo. 2006 was when his trial was and he's still not been uh, charged. So uh, he's been charged, but he's not had a trial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously... Seriously messed up. Oh, yeah. So, uh, all right, time to move on. Um, Harry, you know what? It's snowing in here. It's not snowing in here. It feels like it should be. I'm hot. I'm very hot. I could use a fan. And you know where I should buy a fan at, Harry? Where? Amazon.com. Uh, everyone loves to shop at Amazon. We love Amazon, and most of our studio was purchased on Amazon. So when you shop there, go to wearelibertarians.com and click our link before you make a purchase. We've already made 50 cents, Harry. Woohoo! Thanks, Christy. Uh, or Jason. <laughs> I just assume. Without costing you a dime, Amazon will give We Are Libertarians a commission, and we've already made 50 cents, as I said. Uh, Yay! I'm going to redo uh, my Amazon Prime order for the week, so we'll see what all goes through. All right, do it. So when you need to get that new infant circumcision trainer for $192 because you don't believe in genital mutilation, get it through our link at wearelibertarians.com or update your bookmark with it so you never forget. And while you're there, take a look at our Amazon wish list to help offset the cost of new equipment. 